Fast Word and I'm Maria Shakil. From the 1970s to 1990s, Dawood Ibrahim's D Company cast its shadow over Mumbai. Even the most influential people of Mumbai weren't out of reach for D Company, from actors to politicians and even the police. Dawood was even responsible for the infamous 1993 blasts, which killed several people. In the late 1990s, D Company was dealt a major blow with the advent of Maharashtra control of Organized Crime Act, as well as police crackdown on the gangs. However, now it seems Lawrence Bishnoi has emerged as a Dawudisk figure in Mumbai's underworld with his gang allegedly being behind the killing of politician Baba Siddiqui as well as the shooting outside Salman Khan's residence. Lawrence Bishnoi's gang has footprints all across India, from Haryana to Uttar Pradesh to Mumbai, and an NIA charge sheet has even compared his gang with the D Company. So the question that we ask on the show tonight, has the D Company now been replaced by B Gang? First up on the show, Neeraj Kumar, former CP of Delhi is joining us. We'll be also joined by Ameh. He's a special correspondent at Frontline and others. Uh, Neera sir, thank you so much for your time here on NDTV. Uh, you know, you have written a very interesting book and uh, that book certainly gives us a sense of how you have understood the realities of Dawood Ibrahim and, uh, and, and how he functioned, dial D for dawn. Uh, when you look at the developments in Mumbai, the murder of Baba Siddiqui, what comes to your mind? First of all, Maria, <clears throat> I would like to say that uh, let us not jump to conclusions. Right now, only the foot soldiers have been apprehended. Uh, nobody has been caught who is directly linked to the killing, who can say that indeed it was at the behest of Lawrence Bishnoi. But let us assume that it was. it is indeed Lawrence Bishnoi and the likelihood of which is pretty high. Then obviously, this person is sending a message. He is sending a message by killing uh, Baba Siddiqui, not only to the Mumbai film industry, but also he is sending a political message. He is also sending a message to the real state uh, people. And he is also sending a message to the underworld that he has arrived. Uh, he already has a network in North India, as you know, Punjab, Haryana, Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand. Uh, and now he has, with this incident, preceded by the shooting at Salman Khan's residence, he has announced his arrival on the firmament of organized crime in Mumbai, or dare I say, even India. So you are saying that this is uh, Lawrence Bishnoi announcing his arrival in a new domain completely. He was active in other states. Now he is a gangster in Mumbai. That's right. If it, it is indeed uh, Lawrence Bishnoi behind the killing. I don't want to jump to a conclusion because a few days down the line, we may come to know that it is another gang or another motive behind the killing. Okay, okay, uh, uh, but Neil sir, I want to understand. Baba uh, Siddiqui's death certainly is a reminder of what was a grim pattern in Mumbai. Since the 1960s, uh, several politicians in Mumbai have fallen victim to gang-related attacks, uh, which certainly revealed dark underbelly of uh, how political rivalry is intertwined with organized crime. Here, till now, we do not know the motive behind this killing. Uh, as I said, my sense is that primarily uh, he is sending a message out that he dominates the world of crime uh, all over India, not only in the north of India, 
but also in the commercial capital of the country. So that is the strong message he wants to send. And uh, do not forget that uh, Baba Siddiqui is alleged to have had links with the D company. And by killing him, he is sending a direct message to the underworld as well that now he is the overlord of organized crime in the country as well as in Mumbai. And what about, uh, you know, uh, you know, of course, because the motive isn't clear till now, uh, we are showing those photos and videos of uh, him in company of Salman Khan and Lawrence Bishnoi a gang having targeted Salman Khan in the past. Are the two incidents linked? As I said, uh, if indeed it is uh, Lawrence Bishnoi behind the killing of Baba Siddiqui, then he is sending out, there is a direct linkage because uh, Salman Khan uh, and Baba Siddiqui are closely linked and so are various other uh, film personalities, mainly the Khans and uh, uh, the Bishnoi community has uh, certain cudgels uh, with uh, Salman Khan because he is alleged to have killed a uh, black bug, which is uh, like a god to the Bishnoi community. All right, Neeraj Kumar, I appreciate your time here joining me on top of the last word. We are being joined by Yashavardhan Azad, former IPS officer of Jewel Nikam, is a senior advocate. And uh, we have uh, Mr. Singh, who is the author of Who Killed Musewala? And my friend Ameh is also joining us as well. Ameh, coming to you first, the Bandra West seat, which uh, Baba Siddiqui represented for three terms from 1999 to 2014, has seen its fair share of politicians fall victim to underworld violence. In your article today that you have published, you have talked about some kind of real estate angle as well. What exactly is it? See, there are two, three theories right now being circulated in Mumbai or Maharashtra about the killing of Baba Siddiqui. First is well known that Bishnoi gang is behind it. As Niraj Kumar said, if indeed we, we are believing this theory, then all the other things started rolling. Hmm. Second theory is, and this is, this is very favorite theory of people, people largely believe it very easily that some kind of real estate fraud was there, some kind of real estate battle conflict was there, and Baba is killed by these people. But if we are believing this second theory, then it means it has nothing to do with with this Lawrence Vishnoi and Salman Khan angle. So we need to understand this. So that's why we need to wait for what exactly is going to happen, what investigation agencies are going to find. Third is, Baba Siddiqui is, is no, not a small person. We need to understand if really it is a real estate killing, then this is the first killing in last 20 years, 22 years, the big, big person killing in real estate matters. Okay, so in, before 2000, in 1990s, there were many killings, contract killings in real estate sector. But since 2000, 2004, 2005, these kind of blood battles have stopped in Mumbai's real estate sector. Hmm. People settle their issues in different ways. They go in court, they get settlements out of court, they get some big people, big politicians involved, interfere in the issues and settle the matters. Hmm. So... For the first time in last 20 years, such a big person, someone who is having a big aura or connect or influence in the real estate market is killed. So if we are believing this theory, second theory, that real estate is, okay. is the reason behind Baba's killing, then this is going to be a new start of lot and battles, conflicts in Mumbai's real estate and as well as Mumbai's political scene. Okay, okay. Ujwal Nikam, come in on this. You know, there are multiple theories. We do not know what is the real motive yet that is yet to come out based on what we know what can you tell us sir maria frankly speaking i heard your crime reporter as well as mr niraj kumar also very carefully i have conducted a number of cases wherein the deep criminal conspiracy was hatched like Gulshan Kumar murder case, which I conducted, 93 Bombay bomb blast, yes. and Ajmal Kasak case. 
Now it would be too premature at this juncture to say and comment as to how Baba Siddiqui was killed, why he was killed, who was the person behind the entire criminal conspiracy, what was their objective. Normally it is my experience after conducting so many high profile criminal cases in the Maharashtra, in such type of deep rooted criminal conspiracy, there are three circles working behind it. So far as the first circle is concerned, the actually person being employed who actually carried out and subject to the target. The second circle that consists of such people who provide the logistic support to the first people who actually have been executing the objective of the criminal conspiracy. And last, that is the circle, is of the conspirators. Now, this conspirator always remains in secrecy. Hmm. And uh, hmm. there is a very seldom to have any evidence on the direct criminal conspiracy. In Gulshan Kumar murder case, similar things had happened. Shooters were employed. Shooter carried out the work. And ultimately, the criminal conspiracy was unearthed. And we found that some different person behind the criminal constable. I don't want to name those person because they are not in India now. So in this matter, Baba Siddiqui, no doubt, he has a very close relation with the Bollywood, hmm. not only with the Salman Khan. But I don't think at this juncture that that would have been the reason for killing him. Because the entire Bollywood used to attend every year his iftar party. Hmm. I had attended... Baba Siddiqui iftar party two times. Hmm. And I must say at this juncture, Baba Siddiqui has a very good relation with all community people in Mumbai. Number two, Baba Siddiqui, besides this, he is running some business, but we don't know. But the moment this incident had occurred, one person from Pune had owned the responsibility and saying that it is our, our, gang's, our gang's work, that is Lawrence gang work. Now that person is still not apprehended, but police are uh, his uh, police are tracing him. So far as there are the three shooters on the spot, prima facie it is a reading of the eyewitnesses. Now two shooters have already been apprehended. Third shooter is enlarged at present. So the uh, crime branch, unless apprehends the concerned person who are present on the spot, it is very difficult to draw any final conclusion that this work has been done by this gang or by these people and for what purpose. Okay. So we have to wait for some time. Okay, so we'll have to wait for a little longer perhaps. Uh, but Yashwardhan Azad, uh, you know, the, the big question certainly is, uh, what is the larger conspiracy here? In the sense that, is it about that uh, he was associated with Salman Khan and that's the reason why he has been targeted? Or are there some other factors at play here as well? But the big question here, you know, what is becoming clear in particularly in Mumbai is that anybody can be targeted, whatever the reason. Gulshan Kumar in the, in the, and, and, you know, film, uh, the T-series uh, owner and in the past, you know, 1990s and 1960s, several politicians uh, were killed by gangsters. Yes, exactly. And that's exactly where we should look at the reason and the cause. You know, uh, Mumbai has the sleaze of the underworld. It has all the dimensions of, of dirty money, whether it is coming from real estate, whether it's coming from films, whether it's coming from all kinds of deals. And that is why the organized crime sector is heavily involved in Mumbai. Time and again, there are different actors who come into this, whether it's Daud Ibrahim, whether it's the Chota Shakil, and as Neeraj pointed out, uh, today, Lawrence Bishnoi definitely wants to come in. Mind you, Maria, uh, Lawrence Bishnoi is, is reported to have about over 600 shooters in, in the entire country. But the question is, can a ham-handed job like this be done by a Lawrence Bishnoi gang where two of the guys are just frittering around and getting caught right on the spot by the public. Uh, the, the other issue which is also there is that this kind of an operation has obviously been done by hired killers. Now, the hired killers 
The reasons could be many. It could be the real estate sector. It could be where uh, the positions Baba Siddiqui was in. Mind you, the enforcement directed had seized his assets worth 465 crores. Now, many of the extortions which go uh, go on in Bombay, like hmm. the one of the previous speakers spoke, hmm. is is solved by the various politicians, where the people involved, where the killings are not required. But in this particular case, it could be anything from extortion to anything, and the hired hand could be the Lawrence Bishnoi. Lawrence Bishnoi wouldn't mind acting on a particular year if sufficient money is given. 2.5 lakhs was given to the shooters. How much was it given to Lawrence Bishnoi? We don't know. So as of now, we don't know whether Lawrence Bishnoi is involved, but we certainly know that it has something to do with the Bombay underworld sleaze related most probably to the, real, uh, the, the reality sector, the real estate sector, and an old rivalry. To say that he has been killed only because of links with Salman, I find it a little difficult to believe because if that is the kind of strong message which had to be delivered to Salman, it should have been somebody closer, a relative who are relatively unexposed. So as of now, there are two issues here, which I think one is the complete failure of the uh, uh, Mumbai police. Yes. And, and the protection, uh, that, that's another story, you know, of course. Uh, one point which is being made by Ram Gopal Varma, uh, the noted film director, and, and it, it seems to be very believable that Lawrence Bishnoi was just five years old when the deer was killed in 1998. And Bishnoi maintained his grudge for 25 years, and now at the age of 30, he says that his life goal is to kill Salman to take revenge. No, you know, I don't think, you know, any any proper gangster would risk his life for a cause as small as these. Most of the gang gangsters are very, very secular in their approach. And also above all these, you know, uh, kind of passions. You will see Daud had some of the best Hindu shooters and some of the best Hindu mafia had had Muslim here. So they are above all these. I don't believe in all this. That's why I think the reason has to be something very, very different. Yes, yeah, so the reason could be something very different. But, uh, uh, you know, Jupinder Jeet uh, Singh, we keep on thinking about what exactly is the reason while we are seeing the arrival of a new gang, uh, the, the, the person running this gang is in Sabarmati jail and he has his henchmen in several states and they are ca carrying out his orders. Lawrence Bishnoi, sudden rise and rise and rise. Oh, well, uh, uh, you see, uh, Punjab gangsters, I will, you know, stick to them yes. because I've been reporting on them. They, uh, you know, don't commit crime for money much. They go for name. Hmm. Oh. And it is the name which brings the fear factor. So whether Lawrence Bishnoi is involved, whether he is not involved, his name has spread and his goal has been achieved. Okay. So... That is that is one issue here. Second is that uh, Lawrence Bishnoi's rise has been happening for about six, seven years. Hmm. Before that, this is uh, not known to many people. There were gangsters like Dimpi Chandpan, Sherang Khopan, Jaipal. So Lawrence was often spotted bringing pistas and almonds and, you know, other dry fruits to Sherang Khubba in a Panchkula coat. So that was his steps to gangsterism. And why did, why did he become gangster? He came from a village where he owns 110 acres of land. So all his life, all his student politics, I'm going to cut it to very brief, has been to show that I am something. This is something which you will find in most of the Punjab gangsters, they are not short of money. They just have this very misconceived idea of fame or identity crisis. And he and others, they just want to make a name by indulging in crime. Lawrence Bishnoi is trying to, as, as the, this is as per the experts here, Hmm. The media experts who have been reporting on him and the police. 
he is trying to cash on the vacuum in the underworld in mumbai that is why he has been targeting salman khan for 2 3 years true he was 5 years old uh when the black buck incident happened but the bishnoi community which is a pure vegetarian community and they don't believe in killing even a small insect hmm. you know there have been instances where they carry on uh, revenge for generations that's what we have been covering here right so if he is into that and he openly proclaims that i think uh, lawrence bishnoi's target is to enter mumbai because uh, so far he is in total control in north india he has formed a syndicate with the kala jathedi gang his biggest rival is bambiha gang which is uh, you know trying to catch up with him uh, both of both these gangs have sports hmm. a proper sport in pakistan as well as as well as in canada uh so i well, i would be very happy if lawrence bishno is not involved in this crime or any other crime the biggest question here is how is lawrence bishnoi allowed to become strong yes and, which, and while he is in power, jail he is serving which, a, yeah. a jail no gangster you see uh, the first lesson a crime reporter learns is that the sho can prevent crime or he is you know previ or he knows who commits crime in his beat hmm. in his police station area Hmm. So here is a guy Lawrence Bishnoi he is giving interviews from police custody he is having all kind of security he is moving from jails to jails there are n number of real and fake cases felicitating his transfer from you know Punjab jails to Rajasthan to Haryana to Delhi to to Gujarat wherever but the biggest question which which you know which haunts me is that no gangster can progress so fast like lawrence bishnoi without the support of someone big in power someone okay. who has so, the okay so power. thank you so much for sharing your thoughts ujwal lingam i just enough time for you sir uh, given the manner in which the entire investigation is uh, you know going do you think we'll know the truth ever the conspiracy what is your question will we know the truth who killed baba siddiqui and why was he killed the motive yes certainly yes certainly it's a like mumbai crime branch is investigating the crime and uh, the the investigating officer is a very seasoned officer uh, who has a back record his track record is very nice and i am conducting his some cases in mumbai also so i am a very optimist that uh, crime branch of mumbai police will definitely crack the scent all uh, right incident Thank you so much for joining Thank us, Yashwardhan Azad, Ame, Ujwal Nikam, and uh, Mr. Singh for sharing that insight as as a crime reporter. That's all from me. I'll be putting this uh, story on NDTV.com. Thanks so much for watching.